This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at something that you guys have been begging and screaming for, a review of the Dell Venue 8 Pro. This is a Windows 8 PC with an 8-inch display, only $299. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Dell Venue 8 Pro. The Pro at the end means it runs Windows, not Android. Dell made us uh, feel a little bit confused with that naming, but there it is. This is full Windows 8. 32-bit. This is not Windows RT. That means you can run Windows EXEs. Though, granted, on an 8-inch display, I don't think a lot of you are going to have serious Photoshop sessions for hours on end. Still, there's a lot of power in this little guy. For $299, it's great to see. Windows tablets no longer are a $1,000 investment, and they're reaching the price point where they compete with Android and, obviously, the iPad as well. In fact, right now, for a Black Friday season, Walmart's even got it down to $229, which is the same price as the Kindle Fire HDX and the Nexus Seven. Wow. Of course, that price probably won't stick after the holidays, but still mighty tempting. So you can see we got Windows 8 here. It's actually Windows 8.1, 32-bit, as I said. Runs in portrait, runs in landscape mode. Now, you tend to want to hold it in portrait mode a little bit more often with something that is this size, but it works equally well both ways. And we have our desktop over here just like you would on any Windows machine, taskbar, my computer, my files, all that sort of thing. And the nice thing about these little affordable guys is they come bundled with MS Office 2013 Home and Student Edition. So that gets you Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote. It does not get you Outlook, though. And you can see right here our program listing. It comes with a product key, so you just enter that product key in and run the Office installation wizard, and you can see that we've got our programs here. So it sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? The one drawback for your $299 price is you're only going to get 32 gigs of storage on this, and that means we have not a whole lot free. After we're installing Office, which actually doesn't take up that much space, you can see we've got 9.88 gigs free. And I, I have put one game on here that, that's only 100 megs, so that's not that big run some Windows updates, then cleaned up after the Windows update. So not a lot of storage. If you spend $50 more, and then you're looking at $350, you can get it with 64 gigs of storage. Uh, certainly desirable if you do in intend to install a lot of Windows EXE kind of programs on here or some of the bigger games that are available on the Windows App Store. This can run everything that's on the App Store plus your standard Windows applications as well. Looking around the device, we have an IPS display with very wide viewing angles, very nice color saturation and sharpness. The resolution is 1280 by 800. Now you might say, oh my goodness, that's no retina device, but you know, everything looks really sharp on this. If we open up a web page, you can see uh, Windows does a great job with text rendering and also with image rendering. So it's not like you look at this and you say, ew, you actually look and you say, wow, that's a really nice display. That's a crazy nice display for something in this price range. And you can see the application launch speed wasn't too bad there. This is eMMC, which is more like SD card style internal storage. You don't have access to it, but not as fast as SSD drives. Still for the price, that's what you get. This is Intel Atom based as are most really tiny Windows machines. The good news is Bay Trail, it's quad-core Atom, which is a whole lot faster than the last generation. And Intel Atom's actually getting to the point where the device is tolerable, even with the slower EMC storage. You'll notice slower program launch times, but other than that, it's actually pretty darn bearable. Inside this device, we have the Intel Atom Z3740D. That clocks at 1.33 gigahertz with turbo boost up to 1.86 gigahertz. That's a quad-core CPU. It's not going to compete with Intel Core CPUs in terms of horsepower, but for something that's this size, you really probably are not going to be running super demanding applications on it, so it's not much of an issue. The back has a soft-touch textured black finish. It's also available in red if you like. And here you can see up top, well, up top if you're holding it in landscape mode, volume controls are right here, power button right here, micro USB port, 2.0 port. If you use a USB dongle adapter, you can use things like flash drives. It doesn't put out enough power to use external 2.5 inch hard drives. And we've got a flash drive right here attached to a micro USB to USB host adapter, not included in the box. You're going to have to find one of those yourselves. We'll plug that in and you'll see what happens. It's going to play the little happy window sound, and there it is, it's opening up the flash drive and showing us the files that's on the flash drive. That port is also used for charging, so you cannot use a USB peripheral at the same time. 
Instead of having a front Windows key below the display, the Windows key is actually over here and that will wake it up from sleep and also take you home at any point. 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, nice for those of you who want to use Skype. It also has built-in microphones and a built-in speaker. It's a single speaker, but it's pretty loud. And this is our single speaker grill right over here. Now there's a little pop-up door over here and this is your micro SD card slot and you can see there's a blank area here. That's because Dell will be having ones with mobile broadband available as an option too, so that's where the SIM card slot would go. That's not available yet. Sorry we don't know when it will be. On the back we have a 5 megapixel camera right there and on the front we have a 1.2 megapixel camera and the, the back camera is okay. It's not too too bad. Front camera is certainly good enough for Skype, which of course is now a Microsoft product, so you've got that. Notice there's no HDMI, no micro HDMI on this. You can do wire, wireless display with this, but you can't plug it into a monitor. So if you had hopes of turning this into your kind of, not the brainiest PC, but by plugging into a monitor and using a Bluetooth keyboard or something like that, no, not going to happen. This does have Bluetooth 4.0 and dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn. Like all these Intel Atom machines, it has 2 gigs of DDR3 low power RAM and like I said, 32 or 64 gigs of storage for your options. On PC Mark 7, it scored 2306, which is similar to the ASUS Transformer Book T100 running on the same platform that we recently reviewed. And W Prime, 32.2 seconds to compute Pi. So, uh, that's about twice as good as the last generation Atom CPU. Uh, definitely a performance increase there. And it really is tolerable to use. Certainly all the live tile applications, those are quick and responsive. They're, they're geared toward running on anything including mobile CPUs, but again as a desktop CPU it works pretty well too. You saw the speed for IE there. Since this is a PC, Adobe Flash Player, if you want to use Chrome as your web browser, we also have that installed. Let's launch that at the same time. Speaking of launching that at the same time, 2 gigs of RAM means not a lot of robust multitasking here. I wouldn't go crazy with running too many programs at once unless you want to lose stability. And here we have our YouTube channel, and let's just play a video that's listed there. And this is going to use Flash Player. And we're using the Chrome web browser again to do this. So you're a bit this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Nokia Lumia 2520. Yes, it's a Lumia. No, it's not a phone. Obviously, this is their first 10.1 inch So here we're running it at 720p to match the display resolution, off and, and we're going to look at it volume now. is at half. So here it is, the Nokia Lumia 2520, available on Verizon Wireless and AT&T, unlike Microsoft Surface 2. It not only looks good, it sounds pretty good for a mono speaker there. Now one drawback, you're, you are running Windows on a tiny screen. You can see how teeny these little controls are for Flash Player, for example. So you're going to make some compromises there. And in general, you know, using a desktop UI on 8 inches is, you know, can be a little bit trying. That's why Dell has a optional digital pen. This has a Synaptics digitizer. That's a new kit on the block when it comes to pen-based digitizers. So it's 10 points of multi-touch, and with a $30 optional pen, you get pressure sensitivity and palm rejection. Now, we're still waiting for our pen to arrive. We got the unit before the pen, but we have fairly high hopes for it making it at least a little easier to do things like press on these closed boxes and such. The battery is sealed inside, and by default, Dell ships it with auto brightness enabled, which most manufacturers do, and it runs way, way too dim. That's probably how Dell manages to claim 10 hours of battery life, but honestly, the IPS display is pretty bright. We're in a super bright room right now, so it, it's actually having a slight bit of difficulty combating a super bright room, but it, we disabled auto brightness and, and set it on max brightness for this, and it's quite bright, honestly, to be using indoors and it's adequate outdoors. But anyway, once you turn off auto brightness, battery life does drop to more like five and a half or six hours, which isn't rocking for an eight inch Windows tablet, to be honest. But then again, it lets them make it pretty thin and light. This is 395 grams or 14 ounces and 0 0.35 inches thin. So it's as thin as any mobile S Android tablet or iOS, the iPad mini with retina display. You get the idea. And speaking of the iPad mini, here they are together. Different aspect ratios for the display since the iPad mini goes with 4 by 3 it's going to be wider but shorter. It gives you an idea. It really is equally as portable. Certainly it's not going to stick out of a bag quite as much in terms of height. And it's going to be 
A little bit wider though, our iPad Mini with Retina display here. So now to test out gaming, we're going to test out Reckless Racing Light, which is graphically pretty nice and awfully hard to control. So we're actually going to use, check out how big this looks next to the device, right? This is an Xbox 360 wired controller for PC. So we're going to use this to play the game. And Reckless Racing is, a, is nothing if not reckless, as you can see. But the graphics look great, the frame rates are just fine. This is certainly powerful enough to play this kind of game. <laughs> and here we are getting wet and wild by the seashore. You can see it all looks really good. So it's not just good for MS Office, web browsing, social networking, and little light PC application use. It also can handle Windows Store games quite well. Forget World of Warcraft, just not going to happen. This does not have the power. The Intel Atom, even though it's a quad core and Intel HD graphics are not up to things like Battlefield or World of Warcraft or anything like that. Fun as it might be to carry it around in an 8 inch tablet. Now who is this product for? First off, it's those of you who live inside of Office. Here we have Office running. So this is full Office here. This is not a cut down version of Word. It's not a third party solution. Everything you can do with your desktop, Office 2013, you can do here. Like I said, you get everything except for Outlook. You'll have to purchase that separately if you want it. So here we have our ribbons and our controls. So It's for those of you who want full Office for starters. It's for those of you who want to run Adobe Flash Player as well. It's for those of you who do need Windows EXEs, though, like I said, you know, for the size of the screen, I don't think you're going to be doing super duper serious software development work or anything like that. Also, the CPU is not that fast, but for those of you who need occasional Windows compatibility, USB printers, USB 3G, 4G LTE dongles, drivers that are meant for Windows, any Windows PC will work on this. This is full Windows in your hand. It's pretty neat. And it has the whole Metro experience, too. Now, some people make fun of that, but there's a decent number of applications available now, touch friendly and you know, you can actually spend a lot of time enjoying the mobile operating system on this as well with the mobile applications. Weather, news, recipes, we've got all sorts of things popping up, flipboards coming, of course we have things like Evernote. And anything that you can do in a web browser you can do here too. A lot of mobile apps are also just shortcuts to websites since this runs full IE on the desktop or Chrome. Your choice. They'll do it. So all in all for two ninety nine Rock solid. This come competition, Lenovo has their Mix 2 8 tablet. Same price, same features. Toshiba has the Encore. Acer is going to have the W4. So there's going to be a lot of these on the market, most of them with very similar features. It's going to come down to which one you like the looks of better, which one has a sturdier build. The Dell has a particularly nice build quality and look for the price, I think, and which brand you trust more. So that's the Dell Venue 8 Pro, and honestly, for the price, if you want it, I say go ahead and get it. It's a real solid product, and if you have a need for an 8-inch tablet that runs full Windows, well, you can't beat it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and hit that like button.